Well, hello friends, welcome back to the fourth and probably final installment in our attempts to re-stumble a shank. Uh, I did a little bit more work since the last time um, I, I had the camera on and, and basically I did some work on shaping the shank here uh, to try to match that up with the, the bamboo portion of the shank. And I still got some more work to do in there, but it's it's looking pretty good. So we're going to be able to get this done. I put some tape on here to protect the bamboo because uh, I was going to have to file pretty close. Uh, to do that, I basically used a couple of small files and some sandpaper. So I'm going to leave that for now. And what we'll ultimately do is we'll get this all epoxied together and then we'll do the final uh, sanding of this and buffing to get that uh, ebonite shiny. So for now, I'm going to just focus on the stummel, and this is going to be an awful lot of uh, sanding and such, as I mentioned last time. But I'm just basically going to be, uh, well, I should probably use the abrasive side of it, just coming along and, and sanding away and trying to smooth out all those rough spots that are there because this was just rough carved at the factory. I'll sometimes wrap the sandpaper around one of these nail boards, which just provides a little bit of cushion and you know, helps a bit with, with, with you know, being a bit more aggressive and sort of shaping a bit to the, to the surface. And if, thing, if there's some very large areas, I may come in and use a file like this where I can just be a bit more aggressive about taking off those high spots. So that's what I'll be doing for the uh, probably next several hours. And I'll bring you back when we got something that uh, is looking pretty close to done. All right, so we've worked on this for about an additional hour. And I took it over to the buffer, not because it's ready to be buffed, but uh, because when I buff it, I can actually better pick out the areas that I need to work on still. And hopefully I'll be able to point some of those out to you just to give you an idea of what's going on here. So I'm looking for something to point with. Uh, these transition areas, and they're always going to be a problem. So like right in here, you can see there's some rather large um, scratches there or tool marks that still haven't been taken out. Same is true over here. Uh, the rest of it is, is really, there's a lot of scratches, so it still needs quite a bit of sanding. But the shape is pretty well refined, and if I run my fingers over it. I'm, you know, looking for high spots. There's, uh, there might be a little bump right there. Uh, your fingers are actually much more sensitive than your eyes. So I'll, I'll work on smoothing that out a bit. Um, we just want this to all be a nice smooth surface, uh, no high spots. And of course, ultimately we want to sand it to a very high gloss. So these transitions are going to be difficult. I'm going to have to get out some round files and maybe uh, shape some pieces of cork to use sandpaper in there but we'll we'll get it figured out because it's it's all around here you can see there's some really tight uh, not tight um, well they're tight in that crease marks of the uh, tooling marks so I'll have to get rid of all those anyway that's where we stand um, going to do a lot more of that and then I'll bring you back when we're ready to mate this up with the bamboo. When I last uh, left off I was doing beginning to do the um, major filing and sanding on the stumble. I've probably done about uh, two hours worth of sanding at this point and it is only sanded to 220 grit. Uh, you got to do a lot of sanding when you're working with rough briar. It, it's really important to make sure that you get all the scratches out. But Things are starting to look really good. Um, so it definitely is a smooth shape. There's no bumps that I can feel. We've gotten rid of all those sort of tool marks, gotten out all the major scratches. and start to see, th this is buffed uh, with uh, AAA compound, um, the, the coarsest buffing. And I do that, even though I'm not finished sanding it, I do that just so that I can better see any scratches uh, that might still be evident. And there are some scratches in this, but they're 220 grit scratches. So we'll get rid of those by moving up to the to the higher grits. Uh, the transition piece is, is looking very good. I've got that pretty well fitted all the way around now. And I'm beginning to sand it as well. And ultimately it will be nice and shiny, just like the spacer back here. And remember, this is the stem. 
and once the stem is inserted that spacer is invisible so the balance will be maintained uh, from one end to the other and I think it's actually looking pretty good so what we have to do from this point on is um, you know this is still not attached I still need to epoxy the um, the stainless steel tube into the stummel and I also need to epoxy on the spacer but uh, right now it's just tacked onto the bamboo with some super glue. Uh, you've seen the epoxy step when I was putting the stainless steel tube into the bamboo so there's no real need for me to show that again. It's the same basic idea. You mix up the epoxy, you rough up the surface a bit and, and smear it on and sink them home. Uh, sanding is pretty boring so I'm not gonna take you through that although I will sand this up to 800 grit before uh, staining it. Staining is really the next thing that I think I'll bring you back to talk about. I don't yet know how I'm going to stain this. Um, this is Algerian briar and one of the sort of curses of Algerian briar, although it smokes really well, is that it tends to have these dead spots in the grain. Um, like over here. But it also has some very nice uh, grain there and on the back of the bowl. So I don't think I'm going to do any rustication or anything like that. Probably not a strong contrast stain. Maybe I'll just do something like a dark brown followed by a tan, uh, you know, dark brown, sand it back, and then maybe a light brown or tan stain on top of that. But I'll continue to think about that and uh, we'll talk about the details of that when I bring you back. Well, we are very close to finished at this point. Uh, so we are now sanded up to 800 grit uh, and, and buffed uh, with the, uh, the Tripoli wheel again and it's looking really really pretty good in my opinion uh, again I wish some of the grain was a bit more evident but it is still quite nice I mean there is some bird's eye in here that you may or may not be able to see uh, this is a dead spot here in the grain but there's some rather dramatic grain flowing out from that <clears throat> so I think it's going to have character I, I, I do think this is worth keeping uh, smooth, uh, at least for these purposes. The spacer is pretty much as shiny as it's going to get. Uh, that has been sanded up to 800 and then some micro mesh pads and then buffed on the wheel. So that is done. Um, so the next step is I'm going to do the final epoxy, as I mentioned earlier, and then we're going to stain it. And to stain it, what I've decided to do is I'm going to start off with some dark brown stain and the hope is to get some of that grain to pick up the dark brown and maybe be a little bit more evident in the, uh, the final pipe. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll heat this up with the heat gun just to kind of open up the grain as much as possible, put on the uh, leather dye, let it dry, um, maybe in about an hour do a second coat. Uh, same thing, heat it up, apply it, and then let that dry overnight. Um, I know guys light it on fire and all that, but I just would rather just let it go overnight. <clears throat> I'm not in that big of a hurry. And then we will start sanding again. Uh, so unfortunately this whole thing is going to have to be sanded uh, back down to 220 again and uh, work up to 800. But that's just life. That's the way this process works. Uh, it's not as difficult now because we've gotten all the, the rough spots and scratches and everything out, so it'll go pretty quickly. Once uh, we've got it sanded back to 800, I'm going to put a top coat of, barn of stain on, and I'm still debating this. I, I think what I'm going to do is I want to I want something that's going to accentuate the the yellow in the bamboo a little bit. So I think I'm going to go with this. This is actually something that I used back in my luthier days, and it is a uh, concentrated vintage amber. Um, it's, it's got a nice sort of yellowish brown uh, tone to it that, that looks really good. Um, gives it that sort of slightly vintage look. I, I think it'll go well with this. Uh, depending on how that looks, I may or may not include a little bit of tan, which is essentially a very light brown. Maybe do a 50-50 mix of these. I'm not sure yet. I'll, I'll just have to see. But the uh, nice thing about staining is you can, you can play with it. I mean, these are alcohol-soluble, so if you decide you want to add something on top, it 
you can pretty much just add it on top and it'll mix in with the, the coat underneath. Uh, then very light sanding at 800 just to get the loose stuff off and then we'll buff it and shine it and wax it. So that's it. Uh, I will do that and when next you see the pipe it will be in its final form. Well friends we have a uh, finished pipe here and I'm quite pleased with how this turned out. Uh, as you can see the the stain actually came out quite nice. Uh, you know, considering that this was not the best piece of briar in terms of grain, there, there's still there's some nice bird's eye in there. Got some flame grain going on here. It's got it's got a lot of visual interest. Um, it flows into the bamboo nicely. You know, creates that nice sort of organic shape. And I do think that this just basically is a better overall shape for this stem than what was on there before. So I'm, I'm quite happy with the way this turned out and hopefully uh, Father Anthony will be happy with it as well. And while I have to say that this is probably not something I will ever do again, I think it was a lot of fun and I'm glad that I did it at least once. Uh, there are other options, you know, if you got a pipe you don't like, uh, you could sell the pipe and buy a new one. You could uh, give it away and buy a new one. You know, there's plenty of things you could do without going to these extremes. But it was a challenge. And, uh, you know, I really am grateful to Father Anthony for, for providing the challenge for me. And I'm really glad that I was able to uh, bring it to what I think is a pretty reasonable conclusion. So I hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the process. And I'll look forward to bringing you future pipe uh, restoration and refurbishment videos. If you'd like to be kept aware of those, please, uh, by all means, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button. Uh, we do have a couple of pipes lined up uh, for, for future projects. So you'll be able to stay up to date on all of those and know uh, when the next one is coming out. So friends, thank you. Thank you for your likes, your comments. Thank you for the time you take to watch these videos. And until the next one, I'll look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Wait a minute. What am I going to do with these?